Good morning. I'm Dr. Borgerkar at the Bifurcation Club of India meeting here in Mumbai. And today morning, I'm in conversation with Dr. Subhash Chandra. Dr. Subhash Chandra has done his DM from Ames and has also trained at USA, France, Japan, and Belgium. He's a fellow of the American College of Cardiology and currently the chairman of Cardiac Sciences, BL Kapoor Hospital, New Delhi. His main interests are in complex angioplasties, valvular interventions, and device implantations. And he has to his credit more than 25,000 interventions over the last 25 years. So welcome, Dr. Subhash Chandra. Thank you. So we have this huge epidemic of heart disease in our country and sparing nobody, old people as well as the middle age and young. So what is the main reasons beha behind this huge in increase of cardiac disease? Okay. <coughs> India mm, is a very peculiar continent. A diaspora is uh, vulnerable and predisposed to these cardiovascular problems ranging from the heart attacks to brain strokes to peripheral vascular disease on account of uh, many factors. If I enumerate them, the first and foremost is their genetic makeup in which their coronary arteries are smaller than the western population. Uh, they have uh, heart attacks almost a decade earlier than what happens in west. That means at the age of 40 they start having heart attacks lot of younger heart attacks here. They have uh, something called as metabolic syndrome in which uh, insulin resistance starts forming at a stage in life and more and more diabetics appear in our population. It is estimated that amongst the cardiovascular patients close to 30 percent of Indian patients have coexisting diabetes mellitus which is, is a very serious concern. In addition their lifestyles are erratic, they don't exercise much they keep putting on weight, they suffer from vacity, they have uh, stress which further leads to premature cardiovascular disease. So these are some of the factors which are uh, peculiar in India and therefore uh, this discussion which we are holding is very relevant for propagating the preventive steps in our population. Right, so an excellent point. So Dr. Subhashandra has given us a big list of possible risk factors. Could we then break them down into those which we can correct and those which we cannot? Very good. So um, I would hit upon the most important culprit in this whole process of atherosclerosis and that is cholesterol. You know cholesterol for a layman is a cheesy or a fatty substance which is very essential for the normal functioning of body. It is like uh, the, the oil required by a machine our body needs cholesterol for its day-to-day -day functioning because it is a part and parcel of most of our hormones. It constitutes a part and parcel of our cell membranes. So it is very essential in, in, a, in an optimum level. But when this cholesterol or the fatty substance exceeds a limit, it is then that it gets deposited into the wall of our coronary arteries or the arteries of brain or the arteries of limbs leading to stroke, heart attacks or peripheral vascular disease. So the cholesterol is emerging as the main culprit and this has been proven by the research of last three or four decades that the total cholesterol and the low density lipoprotein cholesterol that is LDL cholesterol which appears in your lipid profile reports if they are high beyond a limit then you are predisposed to have uh, more coronary artery or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Therefore, cholesterol is the most important part. Yeah. So before we move on to the different kinds of cholesterol, where does this cholesterol come from? Uh, the cholesterol has two sources. One is extrinsic, what we eat in our day-to-day -day food. And it, it mainly comes from the trans fat or the saturated fat, which is there in milk and milk products, that is uh, ghee and butter and the fried items and uh, even coconut oil. On the other hand, the good cholesterol which uh, remains in the unsaturated fat comes from oils like uh, mustard oil or olive oil or the refined oils. And uh, the other component is the intrinsic cholesterol which is formed by our body in our liver. So um, when we need to check it, we got to hit on both the sources of cholesterol, intrinsic as well as extrinsic. 
extrinsic will be by by limiting the intake of cholesterol and taking due precautions to burn it if you take it by way of exercise the intrinsic cholesterol will be inhibited by some wonder drugs which are there in our alimentarium for last three decades called as statins we'll touch upon it more in our discussion but that is how we can combat these two sources of cholesterol we have been hearing a lot about trans fats in diets so what is the importance and what are the dangers of these trans fats yeah as i mentioned in our discussion that trans fats are the fats which come from the deep fried items or very much heated uh, fatty items so you would imagine um, french fries or samosas or kachoris or what we in indian kitchens we uh, have in day to day parathas anything which is deep fried will have trans fat and in countries like west or in america uh, they have set ceiling or limits to the ingestion of trans fat and if any food item has in excess the trans fat then those food items are banned in their market so so i i i would presume and i would urge that the same regulation should be applied in our indian context also about trans fat so what dr subhashan was talking about was of course we need to have some amount of fat in our diet but we should avoid trans fats and the saturated kind of fats what's the best time to analyze what's the amount of cholesterol in your body uh very good <clears throat> now for the sake of uh, understanding i would make it clear as i mentioned in my previous discussion that cholesterol is very much required for your body now how much is needed one should be very clear about it you need basically 2.5 mg of cholesterol per deciliter for the cell membranes and the normal hormonal functioning of your body and this would accrue from a level of 25 mg of ldl cholesterol in your body so that is the lowest which you can achieve looking at uh, various developments which have happened in last few years especially the recent american association of endocrinology has set that in extreme high risk category of uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease patients the cholesterol ldl value should be as low as 55 so uh, as you asked that at what age one should start measuring cholesterol it's usually at the age of 40 that we should uh, submit for a health check and as a part and parcel of our health executive checkups lipid profile in a comprehensive way is done which will constitute total cholesterol the ldl cholesterol the hdl cholesterol which is a good cholesterol out of the five components and the triglycerides and the vldls so normally by the age of 40 or so you must have one the first check of your lipid profile in your body are there some people who are prone to heart attacks uh, say with a family history of uh, having some member in their heart, in the family with heart attacks would they benefit from earlier screenings before the age of 40 oh that's a that's a very important reminder uh, that besides the cholesterol the other risk factors are equally important so if i for the sake of convenience if i divide them there are risk factors which are in our control and there are others which we have no control upon the uh, non controllable will be the age by age all of us are bound to have hardening of arteries our family history we can't choose our parents so if our parents or siblings have coronary artery disease then we are susceptible so these two factors are, are the male uh, sex is important the males are more uh, vulnerable to coronary artery disease than females so these two or three are not in our hand and if we have inherited them then we should be cautious at a much earlier age than 40 years which is at a limit the controllable risk risk factors would be the the dyslipidemia the high cholesterol the presence of diabetes or hypertension in us or the smoking which is a very important risk factor in the indian context these are uh, four or five of them or obesity or overweight stress and lack of exercise these five of them are very much in our hands and we should try strive hard to control these controllable risk factors so the point here is 40 is a good time to start looking at the cholesterol and checking whether the cholesterol levels are uh, are normal or not 
at what uh, intervals are cholesterol levels to be measured then? Uh, as I said, 40 years and beyond the lipid profile should be measured. If in the first go it is found to be satisfactory, then uh, you can have an yearly or two yearly check on it. But if it is deranged and you have been advised lifestyle modifications to control it, besides the use of statins, then you must do the first check after three months to see that how the statins are behaving and how much impact they have done on the cholesterol values. And subsequently, every six months or a year, you can have a check on the lipid profile. It is so important for causation of your coronary artery disease. Once uh, your patients are on a drug like a statin, is it lifelong or it should, should it be terminated at some point of time? What's the importance of long-term therapy? Then? Oh, that's a very good question mm, because uh, in the light of the recent guidelines which have come from American College of Cardiology in 2013, uh, the guidelines have emphasized uh, that in fact there are no targets or limits set for the value of cholesterol. There are four major subcategories of patient who should receive moderate or high dose of statins at all cost. The first is then somebody has an overt coronary artery disease in the form of uh, heart attacks or brain stroke or angina, irrespective of LDL values, they must have cholesterol. The second is that anyone whose values of LDL cholesterol in excess of 190 should mandatorily have statin. The third is anyone who is a diabetic, irrespective of the cholesterol values, should have statin, moderate or high dose. And the last category, which is very important, is anyone whose atherosclerotic risk of last 10 years or next 10 years is in excess of 7.5 percent. There, there is an app which calculates this risk for an individual. They should also have statins. And once the statins are started, irrespective of any target values, they have to be continued for lifelong if you want to escape coronary artery disease. So what Dr. Subhashchandra was discussing is today doctors have a very good way of analyzing whether the patient requires a statin whether they are patients of previous heart attacks or whether they are familial problems or diabetic or they have a higher risk factor overall. But the point is that once you are put on a statin, then it's lifelong. Are there any other drugs which could be used for, uh, for lowering the risk then? Oh, that's, that's a very nice question because uh, we are trying to encompass all the possible risk factors in the lipid profile as much as cardiovascular disease concern. Uh, I must make it clear at the outset that with this maxim of uh, having lower the better, the highest possible tolerated values of uh, dosage of statins are being used in our practice. And that would uh, mean that in a patient who suffers from acute heart attack or acute coronary syndrome, uh, at the outset, just like disprin or any other drug, should be given the highest possible dose of statin. And that would mean 80 mg of fat or statin in our CCU or in our triage or 40 mg of rosuvastatin in these patients which are the highest risk patient. The overall idea or aim is that their LDL values should be brought down to as low as possible that is less than 70 or 60 or in the extreme risk category 55. That's the whole idea. Now if in spite of all this some of the components of cholesterol like say triglycerides which is very commonly high in diabetic patients or patients who are alcoholic uh, are the next target and they have also been correlated along with LDL cholesterol with coronary artery disease. So in case uh, the triglycerides are not controlled then something more needs to be added to the regimes of statin and that could be a micronized phenofibrate or choline phenofibrate to control your triglycerides besides the control of LDL. So that is the go way to go forward to control the overall lipid profiles. So that's an excellent point. So we have statins and then we have some other drugs that we could use them in case the statins are not sufficient. But looking at the entire global cardiometabolic problem that we have, uh, is it not important to also emphasize the control of other risks like diabetes and blood pressure then? Uh, yes. <coughs> uh, 
uh, all through our discussion we have been uh, stressing upon various risk factors um, before I touch upon diabetes and hypertension which, which is a given point that they have to be under strict control the glycosylated hemoglobins or HbA1c if nicely controlled have been correlated with the control of cardiovascular disease uh, exercise is a very important component and whenever we institute statins in a patient we must give a fair trial and, and a constant uh, follow up of these patients on lifestyle modifications the lifestyle modifications would be a regular exercise of moderate intensity that would include a brisk walk of about 40 minutes a day at least five days in a week or a little bit of weights to strengthen your muscles um, weight control is very important so caloric intake has to be restricted the intake of saturated fat and trans fat have to be drastically cut down on the other hand you must consume more and more of unsaturated fat which comes from uh, mustard oil or olive oil or refined oil uh, for weight control the balance of exercise and intake uh, is there if you suffer from diabetes or hypertension the blood pressure should be strictly capped under check with the help of drugs or lifestyle modifications and stress is a very important part in the whole gamut of uh, the risk factors and that has to be controlled by resorting to yoga or doing some kind of hobbies like reading music or dance or whatever which can bring down your stress levels so that is the way to go forward to prevent coronary artery disease besides the help of statins which you take. Wonderful. So we have got challenges of cardiac disease in our country and Dr. Subhash Chandra has given us several tips starting from lifestyle measures, exercise, diet, the kind of cholesterol that you should be consuming, the importance of measuring your cholesterol, drugs for cholesterol the importance of high, high blood pressure treatment and diabetes management and overall I think if all these things are done I think our patients are going to definitely benefit. If I could be excused um, in, the, in, the, in the discussion, very absorbing discussion, I just forgot to mention about tobacco. The, uh, a word about tobacco, tobacco is the most important cause in our country of premature heart attacks. We see a lot of youngsters in our practice and I being an interventional cardiologist fix quite a of them with primary angioplasty putting stents in them let me tell you in the younger population the biggest risk factor is smoking or tobacco chewing or any form of hookah uh, use or whatever so tobacco use has to be discouraged at all cost because that's the most important apart from the lung cancers and various other uh, diseases like bronchial asthma or COPD the tobacco use is the biggest culprit in the premature heart attacks so that should be discouraged absolutely one may permit the use of alcohol in moderation here and there in the form of a red wine or a white wine or a little bit of uh, beers and whiskies but tobacco is absolutely no if you want to escape heart attacks thank you for your time dr subhash chandra it was wonderful talking to you and i think all your tips and your experience is definitely going to help at least in some way to reduce the cardiovascular burden. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, sir. BLK Super Speciality Hospital, a passion for healing.